Shalom, I would like to wish you a good week. The parash of this week, Noah. Unfortunately, Noah, he saw two disasters in his life. The first disaster, it was when Hashem destroyed the world with the water, he remained the only one alive with his family. That was a terrible disaster in his life. And uh, they call it in the Talmud, Me Noah. Me Noah is uh, the water of Noah. That means that, unfortunately, it's because of Noah all this happened. It was a fault. Because he did not do anything good for his generation. He saved his life. He was a good man, but he was good for himself, but not for the others. Not like Abraham Abino that all his life was for the others. In life you have to share what it belongs to you. You have to share it. You everything we have to share. You get married, you share everything with your wife, your wife she share everything with you, then the children. Then you share or do good things with your friends. Help. The word standing, the word stand with chesed, with goodness. If we don't do good things with others, so it will be the end of the world. And the second damage and disaster that happened in the life of Noah, as you know, Noah, he lived a long life, it was Dora Palaga, where the people, they were united, very united, but for the bad. They wanted to fight God. Then God, he divided them in nations. We call it Dora Palaga, the generation of divisions. And you know, divisions is not good. The best thing is to be united. But those people, they were united for the bad. There is united to be good, to be all of you united for good things, but to be united to fight, to be united to do, to do bad things, that's no good. So this is more or less the tragedy of Noah. But my friends, there is something that I would like to tell you about what happened after when Noah, after one year that Noah was in the ark, now he went out with the permission of Hashem. Noah, he saw the world all destroyed. He saw bodies everywhere. He started crying. So Hashem told him, why you cry? So he told him, I cry because Look, look at and see what a disaster. So I should be said to Noah, why didn't you cry before? I warned you that the end of the world is going to come. So we did not cry. We did not do the best to save the world. So now you see this. But my friends, I would like to stop here and to bring you something else that I was reading this Shabbat and I couldn't sleep with that because I had a question and uh, I wanted an answer. I was reading a, a, a book and uh, there he bring a question of the Lubavitch Rebbe. My, uh, he still be in peace, Amen Kerazim. And may his zechut be with all Am Israel. He said, he bring the, the, the Midrash. The Midrash said, when Cain uh, killed Hevel, and Hevel he was screaming, because Cain was hurting him, 
with his stone. He was baiting him, hating him, till he died. When he died, everybody knew that Hevel was killed by Cain. Then Hashem came. He said to Cain, Cain, where, where are your brother? So Cain said, my brother, I'm not his bodyguard. I don't know who is my brother. I don't, I don't know. So Hashem told him, you don't know who is your brother? You killed your brother. I hear his voice when you were beating him. You killed all his generation. All the children that he's supposed to have. You killed them. You killed everybody. You are a criminal. So now Cain, he said, Hashem, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Hashem, you Hashem. I did a mistake. Please, sorry. The question is, how Cain, he can deny what he did to God, to Hashem? I don't understand. Hashem, Hashem is the one who created him. So how, how he, he can tell Hashem, where is my brother? I'm not his bodyguard. I don't know where he is. How, I mean, how can, how can he think one second that Hashem doesn't know? The answer is that some, sometimes people want to be blind. They don't want to see the reality. Sometimes people, they know the truth, but they make themselves that they don't know nothing. They, they, they are fooling themselves. I mean, if you have a little bit of of sechel, a little bit of uh, wisdom, think, think. You know, you know, you, you are killing yourself. You you make yourself. You laugh at yourself. Nobody is looking at you. Nobody is laughing at you. But your body laughs at you. You laugh at your body. You laugh at your conscience. I mean, you know, Cain. He was very, very clever. I don't think Cain was not clever. Cain was, you know, he was the one who had the idea to bring a sacrifice to Hashem. But Hashem didn't accept his sacrifice because Cain, he, he bring a bad sacrifice. Why you bring the bad? Bring the good. Why not bring the best of the sacrifice? Why you bring uh, the worst? So that means that he was not a, he was not a, a simple man, he was a, a holy man, he was a, a sadiq, he, he talked to Hashem a few times. You can imagine what it is talking to Hashem. But Cain, he said to himself, why Hashem, he tell me with, with heaven? That means there's no, so why I have to admit? Cain, be clever, what do you think that? Think that Hashem will just to start a conversation with you. He want to see did you regret or not? Not because Hashem doesn't know where is Cain, where is Hebel. He wants just to test you. I mean, Cain, you are clever. Think. Before you do something, before you think something, think about it before. Even when you think something, you have to think if the thing that you think is good or not. I mean, this is a... When Hashem asks, Cain, where is heaven? I mean, why, why you have to be negative to think that means that Hashem doesn't know? So because he doesn't know, how I can ignore. No. You know, it's just to, to start, you don't, you, you don't want to shock you. You want to see if you will admit what you did. Anyway, that's what he did, Cain at the end. That's why he didn't do it at the beginning. My friend, Let's, let's, uh, this is not our conversation for today. Now, this is a question. Adam Arishon, when he heard the, the voice of heaven dying, he came and he saw the body of, of uh, heaven the floor. He said to Cain, what, what you did? He said, well, I did what I did. 
and the, as, as she spoke to me, and the, we made an arrangement with Hashem. So Adam actually said to Kairu, what kind of arrangement you did with Hashem? Why did he punish you? What, when Hashem told me not to eat from the tree, and I ate, eat it, he punished me. Why you did he punish you? He said, because I made a, a compromise. Uh, I had a solution with Hashem. I find, we find a solution that way Hashem didn't punish me right away. What kind of arrangement you made with Hashem? I did Teshuvah. I said to Hashem, forgive me. And because you said to Hashem, forgive me, forgive you? He said, yes. So Adam actually started to think, wow, wow, wow. Why didn't, why I didn't do a Teshuvah right away? When Hashem, he told me, where are you? I, I said, I am here. Why are you here? Why are you hiding yourself? Why? Because I'm ashamed of you. At that moment, why did not say to Hashem? I'm sorry, Hashem. I didn't do what you told me to do. Sorry, forgive me. So now Adam Rishon, he learned from Cain that you can do Teshuvah. You can imagine Cain, he was not a simple man. He was the first one to reveal to us that we can bring a sacrifice to Hashem and tell him thank you for all the, his goodness. And second, we learned from him that you can do Teshuvah. Can you imagine this? Rabotai, my friend, I think that's why Cain, his name is Cain. Cain is from the word Kinyan. Buying. You know, in life you have to buy. Kinyan You must have, you must buy, have in, on you that kind of spiritual belonging. And Cain he had them, but he didn't use them, unfortunately. I mean, we saw that kind of advice he gave on those Kinyan Ibrahim, but he didn't respect them. My friend, this is not our conversation for today. Now let's, now just we, we try to explain who was Cain. Now that we know who was Cain, what Cain bring, the teaching of Cain, now let's talk about the question that Lubavitch Rebbe asked. When Adam Harishuni saw the body of Hevel, he did not know what to do with it. I mean, his body is in the floor. And they was looking. He did not, he did not know what to do. So Hashem, he bring to a, to a, 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 a it's a, a kind of black birds. And uh, they started to fight. One killed the other one. And then the, the one, the killer, he started to dig the floor and he and he and he put it under the ground and he covered it with sand. So Adam actually said, why well, do I have to do the same to heaven? So it's like Hashem is sent to Adam Arishon that he didn't know what to do with the body of heaven. Two birds that they fight, one kid or the other one, and they buried him. So that's what he did there. The Rebbe the, the should be asked a beautiful question. I don't understand. Adam Arishon, he was very clever. He gave names to all the animals. He was so, so clever. He said, I don't understand. Even Hashem, he told him, after that he ate from the tree that he was supposed not to eat, he told him, Now that you eat from that tree that I told you not to eat, you came from the sand, you will go back to the sand. That means once you die, you will be buried. So he knew 
that once he died, he will be going. So why did Noah to do the same to to heaven? I mean, it's a beautiful question. I promise you, I couldn't sleep all night because, because of that question. All night I was thinking about this question. It's, I never thought about this. I know the Midrash and that uh, he saw heaven the floor, his body the floor, he didn't know what to do. And Hashem, he bring two birds, uh, uh, the black bird, Haru, and the, the, he saw how the fight, one uh, killed the other one, he buried him, so he did the same, but at a, uh, one minute. But Hashem told you, Hashem already told you, I created you from the sun, and once you die, you go back to the sun. How you go back to the sun, David? You'll be buried. So, why Adam Arishon, he did not know what to do with the body of heaven? My friend, I have to tell you something. People who live in this world never think that there is an end. That one day, you will pass away. I mean, especially when somebody, he needs nothing. He lives with his uh, wealth, with his money. He has a wife, children, houses, uh, uh, holidays. Never think about that one day we will pass away. I was so, so sad this year with all people that passed away with the COVID. I just say, you said in England, one 15 year old girl, young girl, with no problem. In four days, she got the COVID and she passed away. I mean, nobody knows about that. I mean, people are fighting uh, for the vaccines. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't, I'm not in politics uh, to do it, not to do it. All what I know is uh, it's, uh, it's risky, the, 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 the vaccines, but it's less risky if you don't have it. I mean, uh, I mean this is the fact, but of course, uh, people, uh, they are... Uh, Everyone has a choice to do what he wants to do in his life. But of course, uh, this is my, not my conversation. Or what I want to tell you, that a lot of times we think about life. We think that we will be living all the time. Especially that Adam Arishon, as she we told him now, that now you, you will not live all the time, forever. You will live 1,000 years. So 1,000 years is a long, 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 long way. So you know what Shlomo Melech said? Shlomo Melech said, Tov lechet levet ha'evel, melechet levet ha'nishte. Shlomo Melech said, if you have a choice to visit people that they lost a relative and to give them some comfort, or to go to a Brit Mila, or to go to a Bar Mitzvah, or to go to a Chatona wedding, what you will choose. I mean, the four of, the four of them, it's good. It's a mitzvah. And Shema Melech said, the best start with the one that lost somebody. Why? Because there you will get something. There you will think that there is an end. And by thinking that there is an end, maybe you will correct yourself. You will be good people with Hashem, with people. This is the most important that after 120 years, when you go up there, you have some some good uh, ma'asim in your hand. This is very, very important. Not to go up there empty with nothing. Money, you will not take it. Your wife, children, relative, family, you will take nothing. You, all, all what you take with you, Torah and mitzvot, that's it. So this is very, very important that a person should think. Now Hashem wanted to give Adam Arish a lesson. Because, of course, he was a very clever man. He gave names to all animals. He knew everything. But after he did the same, he was not the same man. Now he had to work himself to be a good man. And now that he's going to live 1,000 years, Hashem wanted to give him a lesson. Hey, Adam, 1,000 years, it goes quick. Don't think that one day you will die. And that's why Hashem, He made that He forgot. He made that He forgot that when somebody died, you have to bury him. It's like He was thinking 
what to do with the body of heaven until he saw something experience something in his own eyes an experience what he saw how we buried somebody so he thought about himself that one day is going to happen to him exactly like that so better to be a good person that way that way Hashem made Adam Arishon to think, to forget what he told him one day. To see and experience with his own eyes. So, that all his life to be correct. correct. You know what the Pekahavot said? The Pekahavot said, Shuv yom ahad if nimotcha. Do teshuva one day before you die. And the Pekahavot asked a question. Nobody knows when he's going to die. So how can you do Teshuvah one day before you die? So the Pekah would answer, our Rabbi's answer, exactly because you don't know when you're going to die. So always be live with Teshuvah. Always you live in a risk. So this was, that was a beautiful experience for Adam and Hashem. And Hashem sent him exactly two birds. Why did he send two other animals? to fight, and then when you bury the other one. Why two Aruvim, Le Corbeau? In French, we call them Le Corbeau, and in, in, in Hebrew, we call them Aruv. They are, you know, black birds, you know. You see them in the field all the time. They are a little bit, they are a little bit big, uh, you know. They eat insects. Uh, sometimes they, they eat uh, uh, even uh, small, uh, small pigeons, or they eat small uh, birds. Why Hashem said him two black Aruv? Because Aruv, it's a, there is a meaning of Aruv. Aruv, it's a Erev, that means the night. And Aruv, that means Israel Arabi is busy. That means united. That means Hashem wants to send a message to, to Adam Arishon. Adam, don't forget, this world is like a night. You sleep, you don't know if you wake up or not. It's a, it's a night. The real day, it's uh, when Mashiach will come. The real day, it's up there. But this world, it's only one night. There is day and there is night. There is Shamayim, the sky, there is Eris, the earth. So, that was, that was the message. You want to live well, live united, live with shalom, live with peace. Do the best to be good. You see, that was the message. Whatever you live, live like that. Live good. That was the message of Hashem to Adam Rishon. And I think this is the answer of the question. That of course, Adam Rishon, we know that he came from the earth and he will go back to the earth. That means he has to be buried. But Hashem, he made Adam Rishon to, for, to forget that lesson and to see something in experience. You know, my, my friend, a lot of times, we know a lot of things, but only through experience of something that we see from a story that we heard, we realized the thing. There was one day, one man, that he told me that he did a big accident. And I went to visit him, and he told me, Rabbi Dabi, this accident made me to understand that life is in the hand of Hashem. I will thought, uh, I will live forever. Here I saw death. Now I know there is Hashem. Sometimes we have a story. We understand something. You know, there was a boy that uh, there was a big family. One of the children, he called me before the travel. And I told him, don't forget to wash your hand before you eat bread. He told me, but I will be in the plane. So I said, well, even the plane, you can wash your hand. And that's what he did. 
And then uh, there was a big problem with the plane. And the plane had to come back to the airport. There was a danger. And people were, were uh, really very big uh, worried. But that man who told his family, I'm not worried because we did. We, I, I washed my hand before eating bread and I did back at Amazon. So this mitzvah will protect all the plane. This is his imuna. Baruch Hashem, they landed safely. And he called me from the airport. He told me this story. Beautiful. I mean, this is imuna. My friend, I think Hashem is sure. He showed to Noah an experience. When Noah went out from the, the ark, from the Teva, he saw bodies, thousands of bodies, skeletons on the floor. Why Hashem? He showed this to Noah. Why Hashem didn't do a miracle that all this would disappear? That Noah, he will, he will see a beautiful new world. Now we come, he's going to come out from the, from the ark. Let him see good things. Why to, say, to, to let him see, you know, bodies uh, of, uh, of those who have been killed in the deluge, in the, in the water. The answer is that Noah, now that he's alone with his family, and now that all the world belongs to him, that he, he's going to be the first one that, that uh, because of him, the world is, uh, is, uh, is existing. So that he will not have gava, he will not be uh, uh, arrogant. Hashem showed him bodies. Hey, look, this is the end. Nothing is gonna, you're gonna live all the time. Hashem wanted to not to break him, to make him, uh, uh, you know, uh, to give him a depression. Just to remind him, hey, there is an end. Like Rothschild. Rothschild, he had a coffin in his house, and his picture inside the coffin. Why? When they asked him why do that, he said every morning, when I woke up, I entered this room, I opened the coffin, I see my picture. Do you think that this is where I'll be one day? So I will not be arrogant. I'll be a good person. I will not, I will not think that my money will take me all my life. This is very important, my friend. My friend, I would like to wish you a good week. Thank you.